Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself an underground base. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And our palette is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to divide this into three layers, and each one will be around different update eras. We have ourselves the 121-120 era with these blocks here, and then we go down a layer for Deep Soy and Skulk for 119-117. And then we have the nether update, although magma was introduced in 110, but still it's going to be mostly blackstone. And then mixing in with some cherry logs and a cherry tree at some point, and then some mangrove plank flooring since it always looks nice. And then what you want to do is find a pre-existing area to place this in. Of course you can build a small house and just have a ladder going down, but I happen to have a sniffer farm here, which has two unused doors which I'm going to be using for this. So, a little bit of minecart noise and sniffer noises, but I'm going to be building it behind this door. Start off by doing some excavation to go downwards, and one thing, make your rooms have one block wide centers. So, what I mean by this? Here. Imagine my room is four blocks wide. Now, something like a bed would be off center. I'd need two beds, but if I did it five blocks wide, I could have trees, I could have crafting tables, and that could otherwise fit a lot more without it looking really weird. So, with that handled, well, build yourself the one block wide centered place and make it a nice stone room, preferably using beacons to excavate faster. Now, I have my first room, and you're probably a little confused. Wait a second, isn't this a tutorial? Well, yes. Starting off, of course, it's behind this door. You know, getting away from the noisiness, I'm going to have this first room here with your basic necessities, so I decided to put down some. Crafting table, furnace, you aren't really going to need cartography table but it looked way too pretty to not put, and then the bed. This door here is for later, but some important things to note. For one, you can see how almost everywhere in this room there's decoration, whether it be the cracks in the wall, the trap doors with pots on them, even a lightning rod in one of them, using the pottery shards, all that. And then good lighting. You can also use banners, and this is going to be our stairwell, but you can see how I transition from an even block palette here to an odd one, mainly because there's no center. And even though this room is even, well, what do you know? I can cut it off right there because the room is so good, mainly because of this level change. It makes the room feel a lot larger and more advanced from a building perspective. But what you need to do is play around with the shape. I have the multi-layered floors here, I have some bookshelves and other decorations, some paintings, then I have the good lighting on the ceiling. One final thing, I didn't actually learn this until now, which is kind of embarrassing and it's held me back on a lot of tutorials, but if you place a stair like this and like this, then what you can do is make a perfect circle out of stairs just like that. I didn't know this was possible, and who knows, you might want to incorporate it into your build. With this basic stuff in mind, and this door relegated for later in another tutorial, it's time for our stairwell. Simple spiral staircase. So get your mangrove, and make sure you get the slabs. Although you can do this with stairs and slabs, still, what you do is you start excavating downward, making sure to carry the tough design on the walls, and then you do a half block there by doing one slab here, one slab here, and then a full block here, and you keep going downwards. You might want to put something in the middle if you want, but personally, I'd go with powder snow in the middle so that way you can fall down. With this stairwell now having a complete design, with a design that's reminiscent of the trial chambers, and then powder snow with carpet on top here, we're now going to be dealing with our first main layer. And here's our problem. We're probably going to have boring hallways, especially if you're building this into a mountain. You can see all around here, well, I have a lot of space, so I should probably build hallways, but at the same time, they're going to be boring, so let's make them interesting. What you want to do for a hallway is make sure that it's decorated. Say I want to have a room here, well, then I outline it, and then, well, Add more rooms. This is a side room, it has nothing important in it, and that's what I want. And then I can continue building onward. Nothing interesting at all with this room, 
but the fact that it's here is really adding a lot. Then you have to fill it out, more mangrove, add decorations, don't forget about useless things, tables and chairs, and uh, well, small things like that. It's what makes your build better. Right here, I'm going to be including a fish tank, so take inspiration for that. Down here, I now have myself the fish tank and the little cranny here. While there isn't anything particularly noteworthy besides chiseled bookshelves which might be useful, though, so we have ourselves a nice hallway. If you wanted to get somewhere, well, this is certainly more interesting. Also, something else, you might want to incorporate paintings. If you look closely, notice no polished tuff here. That's because, well, okay, maybe it's a work in progress, but still, you can hide things in paintings, so keep that in mind. Go back out here. What you want to do is another small hallway corridor, maybe another small room, and then you want to make a large circular area. Three tall for now, but of course it should be taller later on. And I recommend making it maybe about 13 blocks wide or so. You can use a circle generator in the description. Essentially, it needs to be large enough to fit a whole cherry tree, because that's going to be the big point of this floor. It's going to have a large cherry tree. The next layers won't be as large, so it will still be decently easy, even if it might be time consuming. Before continuing on with the circular room, sometimes it's really useful to come back to your old rooms and add extra details, such as moving things around, and otherwise adding tables, some storage, you might even want to go to your bookcases and incorporate some looms, like this. Since looms actually look surprisingly like bookshelves from certain angles, Look at what you can do. Suddenly, now you have empty bookshelves. So do this a few times and now you have room access and a more interesting bookshelf. Now, when I go down here, I have the circular room. And you can see, it's kind of detailed, but I can go through it all. First off, the banners. I just like incorporating banners into this build, very underutilized block. Then, I have four walkways and I can go in. This central area is gonna have a cherry tree, some mud down there. And then these can be separate rooms. Of course, this is a three layer base, so I can't put everything up here or else there's not gonna be an entire rest of the video. Then I put down walls, the bottom layer being chiseled tough, you know, mixing it up from here where it's the middle layer and otherwise doing basic things. Cutouts here for a little plants with spruce logs behind them because more tough was getting boring. And then I have this flat ceiling. And this is an issue. You have several different courses of action, which really depends on how deep you are. If you're right by the surface and at risk of puncturing this room here, then you can't do a multi-layered glass trick that I like doing a lot, the night sky. So here's a little tutorial on it, even though I'm not utilizing it. Essentially, you want to space out layers of glass like this. And then from the top, you can see how it's extra dark. So you want to try this. And then, you want to do end rods in order to make it look like a starry night sky. I've done this a lot of times on the channel and it works really well. Another thing you can do is go down to the shape generator in the description and then make a little bit of an earth shape up here where you go up and then build a dome. Power it blue and now you have some water. Put some green on it and now you have earth. So it's a little interesting thing. And then once you're done with it, place down the cherry tree, and then let it grow. If need be, place down logs under it, so that way when you place a sapling, it's a little bit taller than your average tree. As for these copper grates, put anything under them. Although I like doing lava most of the time, it can be quite noisy, so maybe don't do that. Here, I have a very stylized earth with lime and yellow terracotta, and then a white thing in the middle with an ultra frog light, but there's an issue. Where's the tree? Well, there's a problem. This is only a 13 wide room, and that creates the massive issue of, well, where does the tree fit? This room is actually not large enough for a tree. If you have not built this room, well, you might want to increase the size, even if it might push this tutorial into medium territory with the extra build cost. Still, I'd probably recommend it. Although this room is already quite charming in its own right, so I'm gonna leave it as is. So, this now leaves a little bit of a gap. However, you can fill it quite easily. If you still want that cherry stuff in here, then you can go here, get your mud, replace the grates with it, 
and now place on some cherry bushes. You might want to place some actually on the tuff or replace the tuff. And then you can get yourself some wool bushes here in order to, you know, add some charm and pinkness to the room. Because even though pink is a hard block to incorporate a lot of the time, it works really well when it does. So perhaps try incorporating it. From here, plan out what rooms you need and try coming up with a new centerpiece if you were not able to fit the tree in your version. For my first side room, I have something kind of interesting. This is a room dedicated to the womb. You can see there's one right here with some barrels next to it for storing spare banners. Then a pile of wool and more banners around. And here's what I'm trying to get at here. This room is really full. And you can see how there are things all around to make it more lively. And yeah, there's even sheep in here so that way you can get some easy wool. So what I mean by this room is you need to figure out how to decorate more. Because that first room, I made sure that no corner was left untouched. And while inevitably, sometimes you have to have walkways like this, so you can put things in the middle of the room to mix it up. Put some paintings, some banners, keep the lights up here, maybe some murals, and try blocks other than concrete. You'd expect light gray concrete to be used for a stone or something in a mural, use something else. I used cyan concrete for the sky, then yellow terracotta and lime terracotta for this. Makes it a lot more interesting. And then we have the nice dye area, in which I have a copper bulb surrounded by paintings, and then the dyes all around categorized by what they are. Which, you know, is always a nice interesting way to mix it up, rather than the stereotypical rainbow. And then, right here, you know, the four plant so that way you can get more of said dyes. If you're running out of space for your sheep, then I recommend thinking about which dye you have the most of. Of course, you have a lot of red, a lot of purple and such, yellow, which means you can make a lot of orange with bone meal. And speaking of that, that's white dye. So you don't need sheep for those as much. Although I highly recommend just making an automatic sheep farm for any large scale operation. But you see how I decorated everything? Well, you should try that. Maybe even a jukebox here or there, and potted plants, a crafting table, all of that. So go into your other rooms. This one's going to be more of your general usage, such as the furnaces, the crafting tables, etc. But I don't want you to copy this room exactly. I want you to use the changing floor plan like this, the carpets, the tables, all of that. You should think about it like a checklist. Did you include any decorated pots? Do you have any shards you can use on it? What about storage? Jukeboxes? And what about the main focal point of the room, like the stone cutter or crafting table? Think of it like that, and then start decorating your rooms, and make sure to avoid flat walls. You can see here, my flattest wall is only 7 blocks, before its corner at the 8th block. Right here, it goes outward, inward, outward, keeps it from being flat. Right here, I have holes for the plants, so I make sure to avoid flat surfaces like that. And that's what you should generally try with all these rooms. Right here, you can see I've done another room. And this one isn't nearly as interesting as the other one, but it also goes to show the fact that you can do smaller rooms. Nothing has to be a giant extravaganza like this one. So for this, I just did a storage room, and then crafting tables and stone cutters. There's very little else going on besides the chest, but it still works. The pillars here break up the room so that way it seems a bit more topographically diverse, and that's what you want. And then we have these pits here, throw away junk items, say you have a nearly broken iron tool that's unenchanted, well toss it down. And then we have all these chests where you can replace the bamboo mosaic with whatever you're sorting in there, say dirt or netherrack etc. Change these upper stairs to something else in the meantime. And then the barrels for smaller things like bones. And now, you can see, using the same formula, I've pretty much made another room and it looks completely different, but it's charming in its own way. The low light because of the copper bulbs and it's all coming from the lava, which, you know, ties it all together. Then the copper supports here, it makes it more interesting. So make sure to make those small differences like that. Sometimes you'll even need to do it to your main hallways. This one here, a little empty. Why not add something to it? You know, 
There's no carpet here. Perhaps try adding something. And now for our third area, you need a staircase or a bubble elevator. Either way, you need a way to get down. So doing a quick command, you can see me without world edit is uh, struggling a little at times. And now we need to go maybe 10 to 15 blocks down. Whether you do that with the giant staircase that splits into two and then converges into one into a pathway down here, well, you can do that or you can do a bubble elevator. Maybe you could do both at once, you know, the space is kind of large. Look at the footprint already and this is layer one out of three. So you need to be a little careful about base size. Too large and it becomes cumbersome to traverse, especially since it's underground. So get a way to get down and then we can start building our deep slate layer. Before I continue on, one final thing I forgot. I said this was going to have furnaces. I promptly did not add furnaces and it's a little too late. Which is why sometimes having the occasional blank wall is nice. You can get rid of it and add something. Here I have my furnaces and I replaced this copper bulb with a barrel. Now I can keep all my fuel here so that way I can smelt things. And now it's right next to my storage. I bring something from outside, maybe I go mining, come up here, I sort away the cobblestone, go here, smelt some things, make some cool banners, come back, bring my iron and gold, and start sorting it away. You know, the nice simple Minecraft life. Either way, go down here and continue making your staircase, making it out of mangrove if that's your preferred block palette choice, like I've done here. Right here, just a minor thing. You can use upside down stairs in order to hide water sources. And you can use this for your cauldron so that way banner creation is easier. Now, at the bottom of these stairs, you already saw it. These copper bulbs get darker and darker. And then we have the deep slate. And there isn't really much to say. Besides, I still keep the tough ceiling design. But then I decorate each wall. I return to segmented style, even though it's not a very good way to build in the long run. So, sometimes it has its uses, like this, where instead of doing polished deep slate like you'd expect, although I use it here, I use plain bricks with tiles behind it because it provides that nice contrast. And then, I make sure to decorate the walls with banners when possible, and then leave no wall untouched except these ones, which at least have cracks on them. And essentially, what you need to do with these is put down your paintings, your dark oak, or whatever block, and then you need your candles, pots, storage, even if it's not even used for anything, and potentially swapping out some walls for bookshelves and looms. And then I can go down another layer, keeping this weird design in, and then the bottom blocks of this having polished deep slate, more simple design, right here under the stairs, an empty room. This is just so you can go AFK and not have an anxiety attack. And then, on the ceiling, I use Skulk, and I continue this into the next atrium. You can see a little bit of a hanging thing from the top, it's another dome. This one's not sphere generated, all I did was each ring I'd made smaller and smaller. And then, deep sight up here, chain, now I have fire, there's no chain inside of the fire, but it gives the illusion of there being one. And then the trap doors, with the slab here. Them soul fire to replicate what I did with the cherry up here, and now I can split off into the separate rooms. I'm going to have a library in blacksmith, and if you did the lava design for their storage room, you might be able to connect it down, so I recommend seeing what you can do with that. Right here is my blacksmith. It's under my storage room, so I was able to incorporate the lava into this, so now it pours down. And then the lava pits here have cauldrons connected with chains. Although they don't actually go into the pot itself, though it looks like it's extracting lava for whatever purposes. Right here, the tuff is for molds, although that's not how foraging works in Minecraft, though you can imagine it. Then grindstones and lava nearby, in case you ever find a random piece of golden armor that you need to get rid of and want some XP from. Some lapis, even though right here I use gold for the trims, which are coast and bolt respectively banners around, a chest so that way you can store your trims, and a trapdoor to who knows where. Then iron, although it's raw, it makes a nice decoration item, and now I have this room completed. For the library, I recommend making it multi-tiered, as in this could be a balcony and you have to take some stairs down to get to the rest of the library. If you're running out of books, remember, 
You can always set up more sugarcane, I have tutorials for that. And then, if you need weather, you can make a hoglin farm, there are some very good designs online. Or you could raid a stronghold or two, since remember, there's a lot of them per world. For my library, I decided to go for something larger. While this room's generally quite small, besides the lava pit here, you might want to go a little bit larger, and this is exactly what I did. And right here, well, I have a staircase, making sure to just keep the planks going down because that's a unique design. And then some new paintings here. And you can hear the sheep upstairs, unfortunately that's a side effect of building down here, but if you go a bit lower, you couldn't hear them. Right here, I have skulk catalysts for lighting, and they look exactly like normal skulk from the top. I even used them here inside this area, so that way it was lit up. Unfortunately, it's not very useful because this was before I added the soul fire to it, so their impact is quite small, but here it's very important. Then I hide a barrel here for lapis, that way you don't have to go back and forth every time you want to enchant. Although there's no grindstone, the blacksmith is right there, so not a big deal. Some basic decor, and then, generally what I have to say for this room is make sure that you break up your segmented design. Because although it's a really nice design, it gets old pretty quick. So here, I mix it up with paintings, here I segment it even more in order to use it for bookshelves. Unfortunately I had to remove one here because of course, one thin walls, and in here, what I did is I pretty much covered it completely, using the lava and mixing up the dimensions a bit. And now, we're done with the deep slate layer. All we need to do is build another staircase down, but by now, you should know how to do it. This time we're going to go with blackstone, and this is going to be only one room for our portal and our alchemy. Right here, the stairs going down are here. You can see one last one of those weird tile things until I get to the bottom. Part of the wall is busted out, revealing normal blackstone behind, and I have some magma on the ceiling. The shroom right there is for the lighting because the lantern's a little too obvious. Then a barrel, a lot of them, and this is for your brewing ingredients. So no more putting spider eyes in a double chest and realize you don't need that many. You can just put them down here. And then a copper grate platform with two gaps on either side. You might want to do something kind of topography diverse, kind of like the upper layers and especially the library. However, I think something akin to that of this room here would work. More lava, since this is the nether region. Because up there we had the normal region where I just used tough because it's pretty even though it's found in the deep sight layer, then the deep sight skulk region and now the nether region. So, Maybe some lava under the grates, or on either side, it's up to you. But essentially, the end of the hallway should have a nether portal. And then, you should find a place to put your brewing stands, and then, you need a block that has a stair variant that you can waterlog for water down here. Now, this room is completed. You can see I have blackstone all around, some brewing stands on top of some stairs, then a lava pool. I recommend placing signs and potentially even powder snow or water under it, so that way if you fall in, you fall into a safe room rather than just dying. Especially since the block placement range is uh, stretching it a little with the brewing stand interactability. So, now with this in mind, this build is completed. Of course, we start off at the bottom because that's where we are. We have our brewing, this bridge with the chiseled copper, the sides are a little bit lower, you can see, so it kind of makes it a bit more round. Some barrels for storage, and then you can go up into the second layer, where you have your library, some nice paintings around, and then your book storage here. You can also go across the hall to your blacksmith, where it's generally just an interesting room. Nothing really interesting to say about it though, it's just decoration. And then we have a panic room, in case you ever want to go AFK and not just stand here and die to unknown causes. Of course, the decor stays around, and I have all the deep slate here, a sea pickle farm in case you need it, although that part's optional. I recommend trying to fit in different kinds of random farms into this base. And then we go to the upper layer. There's all these banners around, and then we have the storage, the barrels, all of that. And then we also have a sheep farm built in, so that way we have easy access to banners, along with a colorful sorting system here. Some flowers that are nicely lit up, 
and then you can go even further in. This nice hallway here with a fish tank, two chairs, even a painting secret base if you want it. And of course, spiral staircase, powder snow at the bottom to negate fall damage, and now I'm at the top. The beginning room, not really used for anything besides a bed and your basic utilities in case you only can build a small portion today. So even if you're just starting out, so it's not actually that hard of a concept to learn. Since even though this base is massive, it really comes down only to decor. So as long as you know how to decorate and you have the necessary blocks, then you can build this whole thing. Of course, you can live in this small area up here and keep it safe for a while until you're ready to do the rest of it, since the excavation can take a long time. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.